last Saturday when we are communicating. Next Saturday I'm leaving. So you will be free to do wrong things on next Saturday. <laughs> Isn't that true? There's one thing we all have in us and that's called mind. The job of the mind is thinking. It plays a human energy into many directions. That's the duty of the mind. It is given for watching the entire presence of the human and how a human can progress. It does two things. It gives a man power to penetrate and also it destroys a man power of penetration. It's both ways, it is not something. You cannot say your mind is this or not that. Your mind is this and that, both things. Now is a moment of truth. If you do not undertake to direct your mind, mind will direct you. There's no way out. Either you direct your mind or your mind will direct you. If your mind directs you with all the wealth and power and happiness and sex and fashion and uh, arms and ammunition and cannons and bombs and you don't get anywhere. Because every mind directs you to what you physically feel. And that's not important. Mind when directs will never direct you what you spiritually feel. So your physical growth may become humongous your mental growth will become narrower and narrower and narrow and your spirit will have no chance to go through it. These are the things which are not taught, which are not discussed. And spiritual teachers normally depend on students. Therefore they are not very happy to say some stuff. Uh, you are being blessed, you are bullshit, this is so terrible, this. what are you blessed with? Everybody lives 65, 70 years, 80 years, a average life, and where in 80 years person has no technology to control one's own mind. It is not essential, it is the most important thing in life that you must have command on your mind. Because there's no other way. Once you don't have command on your mind, your mind will have command on you. There's no way out. It is either our situation. And when mind has command over you, 
spirit goes dormant and dormant and dormant and dormant. In the life of a saint, slander is the way of life. Because if you are a saint, you are outspoken. You are outspoken, you are slandered. Because anybody you outspoke with is going to say, oh no, he's this, he's that, he's that. It's, it's a very ordinary thing to do. It will test your tar tolerance to the hilt. Criteria of life is all this, when Guru said, Rath Piyari Mohe Ko Sikh Piyara Nai, I do not love a Sikh, I love Rath. Rath means discipline, the, the performance of life, which is dedicated. I am 33 years in the United States and before that I lived too. But if I forget who am I and my mind slips, the game is lost. It doesn't matter how bad is the time and how discomfortable is the environment and what people think, say or imagine. That's not my problem. That's not what I have to go by. I have to go by who am I, what I am, and what makes me what I am. And that is the consideration. Loss and gain is not the game. Normally people play games because mind lets them slip. That's why you can be a doctor, you can be attorney, you can be banker, you can be a wealthiest person, you can be a businessman, you can be a worker. Whatever you are, if you are not direct related to the control of your mind, you are in trouble. Trouble is not what you think trouble is, Trouble is what your mind tells you trouble is. And when the mind controls you, it tells you, it spin you. And when you cannot match up with that spin, your trouble multiplies. It's very funny. One woman met me and she said, I have wrinkles around my eyes. Now watch this. I asked my secretary, give me glasses. I took the glasses on my eyes. I said, what wrinkles? She said, there are wrinkles around my eyes here. And I said, I don't see them. He said, but there are going to be wrinkles around my eyes. <laughs> I said, I mean, you have no wrinkles. You are going to have wrinkles. She said, yeah, I have covered my forehead, these lines. These lines are fortune. People cover them. Can you believe this? This is the reflective lines of the lines of the infinity indication of that. Mastak so likhe paag. Whatever written on your forehead, you cover them. Isn't it fun? Ignorance is such a situation that you can't believe it. So she's going to have wrinkles. I said, okay, what do you want? If you can tell me something that I don't have wrinkles, I'll be very happy. I said, that's it? Yes. Now it is about 10 years and she still doesn't have wrinkles. I told her to give a massage on the face of blemish cream and with blemish cream your face looks like a baby face. That's a known fact. 
So I told her, I said, just try it if that works. No, if that works. No, there's no blemish cream. We don't make it anymore. <laughs> now she said, get me made. I said, no, I'm not going to, for one person, start making blemish cream. The total interest in wrinkles, total interest is not wrinkles in life, wrinkles in mind. The spirit is totally wrinkled. That's not the problem. The problem is body wrinkles. People are so afraid to be old, you can't believe them. You may be 90 year old, if your spirit is young, you're fine. But that's not the position. The position is, I don't want to be old. I don't want to be old, but I am old. Each day I am getting old. Am I proportionally getting wise as I am getting old? If I am not proportionally getting wise as I am getting old, my, my life is in debt. It's a bad account. Life is a motivated self. Every day you lose a day. Every day and every day you gain a day of wisdom. It will be balanced. Every day you lose a day. Every day you gain control of your mind. Tell your mind to concentrate. It will not. What spirituality is then? Spirit has no way. Spirit is being choked. Why you have to speak and discuss and talk and convince somebody? Why not your presence works? Because your presence doesn't work because there is no show of your spirit. People are afraid to socialize. Once I asked a person, I said, you must shake it, hands with 10 people every day. So once in a while I asked him, how many times you shook hands with today? With two, with three. I said, what happened to the other seven? I tried, but I couldn't. Have you shaken hand this morning with anybody? Your husband, your children, if there's nothing, just touch a tree. Touch something. That is a basic show of strength of spirit. <laughs> That's the expansion of spirit. What are you trying to find God for what? If you don't recognize that God is with everything, and your God has to extend itself to something, and you're closing in because of status, because of training, because of birth, because of God knows what because of. I once had a servant when I was young. He was to take care of my horses. And he was so friendly with horses. Sometimes there's an emergency, we gotta go and we had to catch a horse because they were out in the pasture running around free. So he was just by name called such a Bino, Bino, and Bino will come start eating grass and start coming to him. He'll come, he'll saddle it and all that and give where we have to go. Otherwise you have to ride a horse and go after a horse with a rope and rope it in 
and bring in and, and doing the neck like that and you are roll. It's quite a one hour job. So if you have to go nine o'clock, you have to start eight o'clock. So if you are asked concentrate, your mind's mm, concentrate, mm, concentrate. Mm. <laughs> like that horse, I see it, everybody doing, going through this. Your own mind refuses to obey you, how the universe can obey you, how the prakriti can obey you, how every other person can obey you, your own mind is not with you. Understand that. Spiritual disciplines are harsh. I agree. I agree, I'm not dis disconnected with that part. But without this chiseling harshness, mind does not listen. Mind takes you to sites and places where you don't want to go, but still you go. There were person in habit was just to, if you sit with him, the guy eight o'clock in the morning, till eight o'clock night, he will talk against everybody. First he will talk against those who he knows then he'll talk those who imagined he knows. Then he'll talk about those he doesn't know at all. But keep on talking. Can you believe the state of mind? State of mind which doesn't trust. State of mind which cannot talk. State of mind which will not allow you to smile. And state of mind which won't let you shake hand. Now on the television comes a advertisement. Have you hugged somebody today? Have you kept somebody's company? Keep the company. Metro Life Insurance. <laughs> Have you seen that? <laughs> it is every day. And they advertise after, after every show. I mean, they might be advertising for their company, but the fact is, is truth. If you are not social, if you are not, social. you will lose some opportunity which otherwise is yours. You understand? Isolation living is a personal confined death. It makes you and force you to miss opportunity. Who knows in which human or what thing God will come through. There was a disciple, he was going and he was trying to cross a river and he was to go on those, you know, stone paths. You jump from one stone to other. But he saw in the middle of the river, there's a huge cobra standing there doing like this. He didn't know what to do. He was in the middle of the river. He couldn't turn back, he couldn't go forward, there was a cobra. So he said, okay, you do your job, I'll do mine. He sat down and made his hand like a cobra and started doing like this. After a couple minutes, the cobra slipped into the water. He had a pathway. When he come near the bank, he saw the footprints of the lion. 
He said, no question. <laughs> now when you detained me there to let this thing pass, if I regularly by that path pass the path, I would have right into the very mouth of this lion who was hungry enough and caught a deer. Sometimes you do not understand misfortune guarantees fortune. And fortune is followed by misfortune. They are like parallel sisters. They cannot be separated. To get out of this fortune, misfortune, unfortune, this, that, you have to have a full control on your mind. And your mind has to know you. And you have to know your mind. And for that, there's a meditation. The art of meditation is to control one's mind. And Guru Nanak says very clearly, Jinni naam tehaya gayam sakat kaal. Those who have meditated in the inner of their identity and taken this hard work Nanak te mukujale ke te chuti nanak. Nanak, they are bright and beautiful and their account is all settled. That is the life. That is living. That is being a human. That is the fundamental qualification of a human. That one's identity is established. And what is your identity? You are a human. And human is a very simple word. Human. Hu means the aura. Man means the mind. Being means time being. For this time being, you are a light of God. In a simple layman English, that's what you are. And if you always think you are a light of God, the darkness will never touch you. And if you don't think you are a light of God, darkness will never leave you. You can't run away from reality. Reality is that you are a mammal with two legs. Therefore, you have to walk erect and straight. By complicating things, you do not complicate things, but you complicate your life. That's why if you go on the freeway and you start driving that, the policeman thinks you are drunk. Because you are supposed to drive straight with the lines and within the lanes. It will not be tolerable fact if you are moving too much. Because you are not endangering yourself alone, you are endangering other vehicles too. So when your mind wobbles, not only endangers yourself, it endangers all others. We have a classification that we are human, therefore we have to think straight, we have to live straight, and we have to remain straight. That way we'll be fortunate, we'll be prosperous, because we'll be very easily understood, we'll be very easily trusted, we'll be very easily believed. Other than that, we have problems. The rest of the life, we keep on solving problems, but we have a basic problem. Basic problem is we don't trust ourselves, our mind is not with us, and we do not know how to concentrate. What we cannot concentrate, we cannot achieve. It's so simple. There's nothing much to it. 
you can be simply reminded of this, nobody can force you to do it. Technically speaking, man has to have some time for oneself to keep it disciplined. Tuning in. That's why it is said, Amrita Vela Sachnao Vadiyai Vichar. Rise in the ambrosial hour and see is the time of the true identity. You within yourself can find your true identity. I cannot find it. Nobody can find it for you. You have to get up in the morning and find your true identity. What I which are, count your blessings. That action alone will cover your actions. Once you are covered, you are no more nude. You will find yourself respectable. Nanak, any jani, sabha passage, Nanak, that is how I come to know. I have to find time for myself, for my thoughts, for my virtues, for my values. Though God knows what I do, still I have to find what is in me. And when we are working during the day, we are always rubbing shoulders with each other. There's no time. Time is that when we are all ourselves. There's nobody else. That criteria alone is very beautiful criteria. It will bring you prosperity. People like to talk to you. People like to see you. People like your company. Wherever you be, you will be radiant because your radiant body will be brighter and brighter and brighter. There's no cream yet which can make your bright body brighter. It is you. No, it's true. There's no makeup for it. There is no makeup for character. You try everything you want to know, but still, for your character, you have to work with yourself. That's why the beauty of the Kundalini Yoga is in that we never initiate anybody. If one is fool enough not to initiate oneself, what's the idea? We initiate that. Self-initiation is when you realize simple thing, you have the right to live. You are not a herd of sheep, keep going. No, you have to make your own path in your own life for your own prosperity and richness. And you have to be beautiful, bountiful and blissful. And that's the way God made you. There's no shortage. for short-circuiting. <laughs> but this life which you have got is God-given gift. It is in his own hands he has written your destiny on your forehead. This has to be exploited. For that we'll do the following career. See, if we can get into our mode and mood to be deeper. Please close your eyes and fold your hands, all the three fingers with your thumb and put one finger.
finger, index finger out in the mudra and make a O of your mouth so you can have a conquered effect on your death. And breathe in and breathe out. With this O oh, when you breathe, you will know you are breathing. So it become a conscious act. Take the longest breath, breathe in and breathe out. That's all you have to do. Concentrate on your breath. Better you make the O, better effect it will be. Concentrate.
कंसंट्रेट 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 ऑन दी ब्रेथ In other words, what you are doing is paying attention to your breath, and breath will pay attention to you.
on exhale, pull the navel in, continue the exercise.
exert your power of mind to meditate on your mind. By doing so, you will receive a stage of reaching where your mind will remain balanced in spite of what anybody says. If you start counting your values, you will give chance and birth to your virtues. Vice versa. In air deep, hold your breath and squeeze your spine. It's very important. Squeeze your spine, muscle by muscle. Let it go. In air deep again. Concentrate. And this time, spine and fiber must be squeezed. Squeeze, try it. Let it go. In case you might have missed one, in air deep. Get to control of your body. Squeeze from toe to top, every part of your being. Let it go. <coughs> I'm not going to discuss how you feel. Uh, <laughs> I understand. <coughs> These are the some things which I shared with you. My idea is that there's no beauty in you if you do not have tolerance. You have to have exotic sense of tolerance. Doesn't matter what anybody does, what they say, how they attack you, what they want out of you, you remain calm. That is the faculty of the ocean. How many river drops in it? How many things go? You remain calm, quiet, and peaceful. It is that peace we are talking about, which is the source of prosperity. If you are poor, that is by your own reason. Because if you are not containing yourself, how can you contain anything else? Well, when we return from India, we we'll lecture on that subject. <laughs> <laughs> Self-containing is the art of prosperity. You know, there was once a man who went to his teacher, he said, this is, this is, this is. He complained about 36,000 times. And the teacher said, what is your problem? He said, I cannot contain myself. And he said, I'm seeing it. At least if you would have come and sat down and contained yourself, I should have blessed you. You didn't give me a time. 
self-contentment is the highest spiritual strength. There is nothing to match. You know, I don't have a lot of students. Because I don't believe in quantity. I'm working on quality and people who <coughs> are are people. And your virtue is your progression. I'm leaving with a simple strength of promise <coughs> that you will keep on praying <coughs> for my help. Because my program as it is is horrible. The moment I have to land, I have to go from one thing to another and it is a kind of continuous. <coughs> we are booked up to 25th and then after that it's not going to end. But when I come back, I tell you a lot of stories. <laughs> I'm going to meet why India could produce such saints and why not now? I'm going for actually a study. I'm itching to go and see what is going on. Why teachers do not build people? Why they build big, huge ashrams and all kind of stuff? And uh, one of the most important things, whether I do anything or not, the kids, they are God waiting. We have good rapport now with our kids, right? And they are growing. So, still we have to build two stories of the Miripiri Academy. So. If you keep on creating babies, we can accommodate them. <laughs> yeah, that, that was what my dream was in my life that I should have for my second generation to come a place. <laughs> place to be. And they say it is now getting better. There are good vibrations. And Anandapur house will be very beautiful. It will have 12 departments. I know City Karam is angry at me with spending so much money. What should I do? That's the way I feel. <coughs> that, uh, it is dishonest on my part. I'm not denying it. The honest on my part is that it should be a beautiful place where it should speak for you. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, people think they are not in that house. <laughs> Somebody said, this is Gurdwara. <laughs> they call this is good. <laughs> That's in Anandapur. <laughs> Government of Punjab has totally repaired it. It looks very <laughs> It's very funny. People are very simple. Because it is on the mountain, it looks like a fort. It looks very pretty. Well, it's well done. 
mission is completed. I'm leaving behind you. The fences are around the property, so you know what you own and what you don't. I know. Then Purti is mad at me now. He has to look after everything with all his people. I'm leaving behind you with essential essence. that you will continue teaching class every such a day. Like Dev Sroop, she's MBA. She can teach a class. If not, she can copy it. But must meet every such a day. Better than you meet now. <coughs> so each Sunday, each Saturday, you will pick up a teacher for next Saturday. What democracy? <coughs> right? Not difficult, it's just a matter of getting selected and giving a lecture, giving a career, making a program, organizing. And this way, we can help us. We need this because after this 11th episode, each day things are getting tighter. It's a very slow depression. It's called cold depression. It's mental, physical, economic, in many other ways. So please, don't forget. Promise? Yes, sir, to get rid of me. I'll go. I don't mind. But at least you would have said big yes, sir, then I would have at least happy and satisfied, right? Yes, sir. You know what you say? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it means get off our back, let us have fun, huh? <laughs> That's not true. Will you honestly and sincerely and honorably do it? Yes, yes sir. That sounds right. <laughs> but that's what you have to be reminded of, that we should all have beautiful teacher in us, all of us. And this is time to practice, OK? Yes, yes sir. May the Lord in time shine upon you. Bye, why would you go also? Ciao. What else is Sholom. Whatever you like. Go on way out, yeah. Oh, by the way. Those who have to send their offering to Golden Temple must write their name and the money and uh, give it to one of my staff members. We'll go and present it.